Hello and welcome to today's video uh, on All Hell Let Loose uh, 6mm WW2 Wargaming Rules by David Wasilewski. Um, this video is hopefully the first in a series to look at specific sections of the rules in more detail and hopefully bite-sized chunks. And today I'm going to start right at the beginning and we're going to talk about units and formations. The unit is the smallest tactical manoeuvre element in the game. A unit is a base or a vehicle or a gun. This vehicle, these vehicles here set up for Arnhem um, represent two to three vehicles historically uh, and each base of infantry represents somewhere between 20 and 30 um, infantry soldiers. Um, the guns down here are representing um, two anti-tank guns. The, the rules are flexible, they can vary, so you can uh, take them up to um, four or five uh, vehicles um, being represented by a single stand or base. But essentially the important thing is um, that each base is a unit and that is the smallest manoeuvre element within the game. Units are grouped into formations. Uh, we call it formations rather than companies or battalions. Again, it depends at what level you want to play the game at. Um, clearly the higher scale games, um, then you're talking about uh, a battalion sized um, formation, um, whereas in some of the games where you're getting closer to um, uh, one to one uh, kind of figure scale, you might be talking about company sized uh, formations. Um, formations are crucial to the game. They are uh, the, the, the mechanism through which orders are issued and the quality of troops uh, is determined. That, that's all done through the formation. Now there are five different types of formation within the rules. Um, so I'm just going to take quickly through uh, each one. Uh, we have uh, an infantry formation, uh, mostly infantry either on foot or in trucks. Um, might have some support units attached, but fundamentally it is, is basically an infantry unit. A mechanised formation will involve uh, predominantly infantry, but mounted in armoured fighting vehicles. Um, rather than in trucks, and again, cross attachment can still happen. Uh, an armoured formation uh, is principally tanks or um, the um, armoured fighting vehicles such as Stugs, um, even those with, with fixed turrets. Um, the fourth formation, artillery, uh, again, uh, guns, self propelled guns, rockets. Um, basically, they are capable of uh, indirect fire. Uh, they're often represented off table, um, but obviously can be on table uh, in certain scenarios. Uh, and then finally, um, aircraft um, uh, representing uh, a flight of ground attack uh, aeroplanes. Those are the five formations, uh, we then have within that um, three different troop qualities. Um, essentially inexperienced troops, um, poorer quality, maybe not a lot of training, poor leadership. Um, these guys are, are not necessarily really happy about being in, in a fight um, and they, they suffer um, kind of penalties during the game and they just aren't as effective uh, as regular troops. Uh, regular troops are intended really to cover the vast majority of the soldiers um, during the Second World War. 
Um, they've got training, um, they've got discipline, they've got reasonable leadership, um, and uh, effect, they're effective. Um, the final um, category are veteran troops. Uh, and again, these are highly motivated, highly capable, experienced soldiers. They've seen a lot of combat. Um, they are really motivated uh, in terms of what they're uh, fighting for, uh, and they are generally they generally have uh, kind of above average uh, officers either through experience or ability. <clears throat> now formations uh, when they're on the table uh, have to act um, together. Um, the way the activation system and movement system works is um, this is all done at the formation level. So uh, as each um, uh, formation is activated, um, all of the units within that formation undertake um, um, whatever actions the, the player kind of wants, but it, it's done via the formation. Um, consequently, um, what we require players to do is to maintain um, a kind of formation coherency. Um, so all the units within a formation have to be within a certain distance of a HQ unit, uh, unless they're one of uh, a number of independent um, unit types, such as, um, say, recon troops or mortar teams. Uh, troops that would either be operating independently but associated or um, kind of in a support role. Now the individual um, unit uh, types um, within uh, the game, again we're trying to keep it fairly straightforward and we use a, a kind of a broad brush really in terms of describing it, is we have infantry somewhere between four and eight figures on a base, um, again representing foot soldiers, potentially it might be uh, cavalry, um, motorbike, cycle uh, mounted troops, uh, and essentially they move at what we call leg speed unless they're, they're in um, uh, a vehicle. Now the vehicles um, we break down into two categories. They're either soft skinned, um, such as trucks um, or um, carriers, um, or they're armoured fighting vehicles uh, with some armour, such as um, the Hanna Mags. Now, soft skinned vehicles, they don't, um, don't really count. They don't have a fighting capability, um, whereas the um, armoured fighting vehicles will have some kind of fighting capability. Transport for infantry doesn't count um, against um, the total number of units within a formation. Um, we've set a, a limit of 12 formations, um, sorry, 12 units within a formation. Um, this just basically m makes the game flow a little easier. There's um, less impact from um, um, firing. Uh, it doesn't devastate an opponent. Uh, it can hurt, but um, really large formations would just threaten to overwhelm. And so what we've come come around to is a, is a balance of around 12, 12 individual units within a formation. Um, the armoured, sorry, the mechanised formations are slightly uh, larger because of the inclusion of the Hanna Mags or uh, M3s um, and, and so they, they tend to be a little bit larger. Um, the infantry transports though don't count uh, as losses when they're removed uh, and therefore um, the uh, mechanised uh, formations are actually a lot stronger than standard regular infantry formations. Um, the next um, unit type we have is a towed gun. 
Um, so here it's um, uh, an anti-tank gun, um, could also be artillery, uh, could be um, rocket launchers. Um, the um, next type is uh, aircraft, uh, again that's just a, a single aircraft representation, but we also include uh, a HO uh, a headquarters HQ stand, uh, so in this particular instance um, Victor Grabner is uh, the HQ and that's, that's his vehicle. Um, they don't fire uh, and they can't, can't be killed, they're essentially representing um, the formation organisation and generally also we add um, to most formations a forward observer for calling in uh, additional formations worth of um, uh, indirect fire, whether it's artillery, rockets or even calling in aircraft. So that's that's um, really it. Um, the basic outline premises, um, you start off with the unit, it's generally platoon sized, uh, um, 30 infantry, 5 vehicles, um, three or four guns, um, three or four strike aircraft. Um, they are grouped together within a formation, a maximum of 12 in a formation. The formation um, requires a HQ unit and all units must stay within range of, of that HQ in order to operate effectively on the table um, and there is a maximum of 12 units allowed in the formation. Um, in the rules we've broken down uh, a number of different formations for the European theatre uh, for the late war. Uh, again uh, we kind of use a generic uh, template for that there were thousands of different um, formations with thousands of different vehicles and troops in use uh, during the Second World War and we haven't tried um, to exhaustively describe all of those. What we've done is provided a framework that will let you assign your own and then we've um, put in information on a whole range of vehicles and troops that we used during the Second World War and added uh, differentiating keywords to indicate the capabilities for, for example, uh, troops within Hanamag. Well, the Hanamag is an open top vehicle, they can dismount for free, uh, whereas troops within a truck require half a turn as worth of movement to deploy. Um, so there is a whole range of um, different keywords that can be applied to units dependent on their effectiveness and capability. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, um, check back, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'll be posting more shortly um, where what I want to do is take through take you through um, the activation sequence and uh, basic movement. So catch you all later. Thank you very much for watching.